internet, my name is Lave and I watched another one of Odeon's Screen Unseens this week. If you don't know what that is, Odeon Cinemas every now and again will show a film yet to be released in the UK for a reduced price of £5. The only catch is you don't know what the film is until it starts. I've got to be honest, I was kind of hoping it was going to be Logan Lucky this week, but it wasn't. It was a film called Wind River, which is directed by Taylor Sheridan, who interestingly is primarily known as an actor, but he also wrote some of my favourite recent films. He wrote the film by Denis Villeneuve, Sicario, and last year's Hell or High Water, directed by David McKenzie. And I don't know if he was shadowing them at the time, but he seems to have learnt a lot from them. He's the directed a pretty good film here. Set in a remote part of Wyoming, America, Jeremy Renner stars as Corey Lambert, who's an expert hunter and tracker whose job it is to keep predators away from the residents and natives' livestock. One day he comes across a dead woman in the wilderness, so he teams up with the local law enforcement and the FBI agent assigned to the case played by Elizabeth Olsen, and together they try to solve the mystery. Now I'm totally not doing the film justice in that little summary, in the same way that you can't do Hell or High Water justice by saying it's about two brothers who are just robbing banks. There's a lot more meat to the bones and the screenplay is really terrific. It sets up a fantastic first act as you find out who Jeremy Renner's character is and why he's so motivated to help Elizabeth Olsen's character who I have to admit I had question marks over but she is brilliant in this film. At first I thought her character was going to be a young rookie, a woman working in a man's world, but she totally isn't. She completely holds her own. She's got a fiery determination to seek justice for this girl. The only thing that she's naive about is the wilderness, the environment that she's been dropped in. And that's the real star of the film for me. It's the setting and the environment. They do a fantastic job of demonstrating how remote this part of America is and how harsh Mother Nature can be. As much as this is a crime mystery thriller, it's also a film about isolation, not so much on an individual, but isolation in terms of this community who are cut off from the rest of the world. It also asks some pretty scathing questions about the federal justice system or the lack of involvement in these types of cases in that area, particularly as this film is bookended with the fact that it's based on actual events. It is terrifically acted though across the board. I really liked Jeremy Renner in his role. It's easy to forget that he's more than just a Marvel character. He can act and he definitely brings it in this and so does Elizabeth Olsen. I really liked her character and their relationship is really interesting. It's a plutonic relationship, but they have respect for each other. They're both great. And I even liked Graham Greene, who's playing a similar role to what we've seen him in before, but he's awesome as the sheriff, who's got a dry sense of humor and a sense of world weariness to him. Now, for all the praise that I'm heaping on this film, I do have a couple of negatives. One in particular, which was really surprising. It just seemed to contradict everything that we'd seen in the first and second act, where you're discovering and figuring out the clues and putting the pieces of the puzzle together with those characters, when then all of a sudden the film basically gives you the answer. It's such an odd choice which comes out of nowhere. It didn't ruin the film for me, but it did bring me out of it for a split second as I thought I'd missed something. And then I caught up with myself, thought, okay, we're just seeing what actually happened now. I don't really know why they did it. Arguably the scene could have been taken out completely and it wouldn't have affected the film at all because the third act wrapped things up nicely anyway. On top of that, there is one soundtrack choice which I don't know if it has significant meaning for that particular area in America, but it's basically a song with a guy singing or basically talking and it singing sounded like someone was talking off screen or someone was talking in the back really of the cinema, melancholy. like this guy. Plus there's a couple of snowmobile scenes which are separated but they felt like they were the same shot. I'm sure they weren't, but they just felt very similar. I'm being really super nitpicky here because the rest of the film is extremely well made. The cinematography is fantastic. It's really well acted. I found it really, really compelling. Odeon Screen Unseen has done it again. So that's my thoughts on Wind River and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. I definitely want to see more from Taylor Sheridan. He's a fantastic screenwriter and it would appear he's a great director as well. Denny Villeneuve and Dave David McKenzie have definitely rubbed off on him. 
If you liked Hell or High Water and Sicario, then you will definitely like this. I'm hesitant to say that it's as good as those films because of that one scene, but overall, a very, very solid mystery thriller. So thanks very much for watching my review of Wind River. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you go and check it out when it gets a UK-wide release. It is definitely worth it, and thanks again for watching. If you can, give this video a like, and don't forget to share the lead. I'm singing a song while I'm doing a review. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs>